Hello, thank you for tuning into the video. Um, today I'm going to be going through everything inside of my process lasso and how I managed to get 500 to 600 FPS significantly more stable than where I have ever been able to get it to before in uh, a multitude of games like Valorant, Overwatch, and uh, a bunch of other ones. So one of the main problems, I'll just quickly state this for anybody that isn't quite familiar with what I'm doing here. Um, part of the problem with getting above about f over 400 FPS is that games specifically need an incredibly low amount of latency and they start to become essentially bottlenecked more by the actual like Windows operating system and processes running in the background than they do actually being bottlenecked by like the game itself. So for example in Overwatch I could reasonably get 400 FPS on just about all pieces of hardware I'd come into talk contact with within the last five to seven years. Everything from about a 1070 and up is basically okay to get around 400 FPS. But after you get about up to, I'd say, 500 FPS, the the scaling starts to become extreme with what you need to do to actually get it running. And one of the things that I've always downloaded has been um, like Windows 10 Deep Loader, um, Windows Optimization Guides, and things like that. But none of them really solved the problem of um, having to fix uh, essentially Windows and how it runs and operates the game and the systems. So what I've discovered is that for my 10900K specifically, this can also apply to you, but this is just me speaking about what I'm doing right now, is that if you simplify the entire operating system to only use the last few of your cores, it increases the frame rate stability exponentially. Now, the problem with this is that up until this point, I didn't really know about a processor like application that could do something like this, where it could control hundreds, if not thousands of different services running in the background in a way that was easy to use and intuitive and didn't require watching 20 YouTube videos over and over again. So this is why I found out about Process Lasso and it's been incredibly useful because it has basically made it um, extremely easy to test very consistently with my um, computer when I'm running at extremely high FPS because for most people that don't know in order to get an actual 600 FPS stable you have to have only 1.6 milliseconds in between each frame that means that there has to be a frame coming out every 1.6 milliseconds at a minimum in order for it to be stable and once you start working with um, Windows and a lot of different processes running in the background, yeah, it starts to become extremely difficult. So this is my guide on how to actually get that going. So here we go. So the main thing that we're gonna go over first is priority class. Now, a lot of the um, people will tell you, oh yeah, you need to run everything at normal because if you put priority tasks or priority class things on idle, they'll stop working or they kind of start to break. This is semi-true, but not really in my experience. So from this instance here, I'm running almost, I'd say about 80 to 90% of my processes on priority class idle. And if you notice the little star right next to them, that is the CPU priority dynamic thread priority boost. I have noticed that if you enable this on services that are running idle, it decreases the frame rate. So I always keep these unchecked for all of these ones that are running at idle. Now, there are a few processes that you cannot change manually in Process Lasso. I think you have to do a registry editor or you have to go even deeper into it. So you can't, for example, change the affinity and the priority class of these six processes that I'll just highlight right here. These processes right here, you cannot edit them at all with um, Process Lasso in terms of the priority class. It will error out and it won't let you do it. And I probably wouldn't recommend doing anything with these just because these are like the core functioning of like Windows, like registry, the system, the Windows initialization, EXE services, right? These things are pretty important to have and I would keep the priority thread boost on those as well. Now, the next huge thing and this was the thing that really got this going into high gear was CPU affinity and then CPU sets. So to explain these two differently, they're both pretty similar, but they both do different things. CPU affinity is basically essentially acts as a hard lock on your CPU or your operating system. So when I say set CPU affinity to seven through nine, that means that it's only going to use my eight 
eighth core through my tenth core on my CPU because we're counting from zero. And so the reason why I've done this is because I found you can actually run Windows completely with only about one or two cores and you can run all of your background tasks on a single core. I haven't really noticed very much difficulty. I do use Firefox, so maybe that's it, but I also run Discord in the background and the entire operating system can run just fine on only those two or three cores. It doesn't have any issues. So that's the biggest thing here is that I noticed that I could trim essentially my entire operating system down to only three cores with a CPU affinity and it ran really well. But the problem is, is that after I ran Affinity, I noticed that Windows wouldn't change. So if I tried to change CPU Affinity to, for example, only use like these last two cores, it would error out and it would tell me access is denied or you do not have the higher permissions. So I just basically had to give up at that point. But then I learned about CPU sets and CPU sets basically act as what I would like to describe as a soft, as a soft CPU Affinity. So basically rather than hard, forcing Windows or a program or your essentially your CPU to only use those cores, what it's actually doing is it's sort of guiding the instructions to those cores. So it basically acts as like an extra buffer in between processes when they're running. And the reason why all of this matters, guys, is because this was what was killing the ability for me to stabilize my frame rate above, I would say, past 500, 550 is I could get it to stabilize at around 600 in a majority of situations, but then randomly in certain situations that didn't make any sense, I would suddenly get frame rate dips that were in like about 100 FPS, which doesn't, which sounds like a lot, but in theory, that's only about half a millisecond to one millisecond when you start talking about this high of a frame rate. So what I did is I essentially set my CPU sets to seven through nine, the same way that I did it with the CPU affinity. And what this does is the reason why this matters so much is because now what I do whenever I open up Overwatch, Overwatch I have set to use the CPU affinity of cores CPU one through six or one through five, depending on the game. The reason why is because now Overwatch basically gets six cores to potentially five to six cores completely untouched by the entire operating system, meaning that absolutely nothing goes on those cores. No CPU usage ends up happening on those cores without me specifying it here in Process Lasso. And the reason why that's important is because on the top right right here, you'll notice the CPU percentages. When Overwatch is running, all of the processing is happening on those six cores and nothing else not even windows is activating on those cores in terms of like the background processes obviously windows is acting a little bit just for the like instruction sets and stuff but nothing nothing that's like bloatware if that makes sense so none of these svc hosts none of the like nvidia container stuff none of it and so this essentially allowed me to stabilize the frame rate much much more significantly beyond what I was normally able to do because now no process is running on those six cores that I need for Overwatch. I've noticed that Overwatch uses about five to six cores. It'll sometimes use the sixth core, but it's mostly five. But in this case, with every other game too, Valorant will, for example, run great on five cores. It doesn't really use six cores. Um, Apex Legends is the same thing. And so the reason why this is important, guys, is because this can scale to multiple games. And it will allow you to actually like, like dig through the actual hardware and software limitations. Because up until this point, it's kind of just been up in the air in terms of what's actually bottlenecking your system. Because at that high of a frame rate, it's hard to tell if it's the CPU, the RAM, the, you know, something as simple as like the SSD, I don't know, the RGB on your fans, who cares? <laughs> but now, what I do is essentially when I run my games, I will go and I will set the priority class to now, don't worry about this. I've been testing this for the last couple of months now and I haven't noticed any issues, but I run my games on real time. You can also choose high if you're paranoid, but real time I have never noticed to actually cause any issues, even when I was having blue screens repeatedly because I was experimenting with different overclocks and things. So. I would recommend doing it because one thing I've noticed about running your CPU priority on real time is the input lag reduction is absolutely insane. It is crazy how much more responsive your mouse feels when it's running on real time 
versus running on even something as like high or above normal. And obviously the reason why this is, is because real time takes the highest priority of the entire operating system. So it goes above your Windows execution stuff, like your registry, it goes above everything. So that's the reason why I think it has such a massive responsiveness and latency advantage is because when you run it on real time, there's nothing that can essentially get ahead of it or something that will take up its space. Not that that ever would, because that's why Process Lasso is doing this. But I also have um, on a few different games, the Windows Dynamic Thread Boost on some of the games. So for example, Valorant doesn't like running on the um, Dynamic Thread Boost, but Overwatch does. And this is me just basically sitting in a very like extremely like solidified test scenario. And so the reason why this is, is because now what you're going to do is the way I've set up Overwatch for the affinities, this is the important part here, but Overwatch and Valorant and pretty much every game I've noticed runs its best when you don't use core zero. And there's a few different like articles about this online, but I've seen this for myself firsthand. So in Valorant, if I go into the practice range and I stand in the exact same spot, if I disable core zero and I shift it to either core five or core six, the frame rate jumps by about 100. Now we're talking 1200 to 1300 frames per second here on the training range of Valorant, but it was repeatable every single time I did it. So there's a lot of articles online and you can look it up for yourself, but basically when you run your games, don't run it like this where you have the first six cores of your CPU running. Do it to where you have it like this, where you're skipping core zero and then you're just assigning the next core. So this is what I run Overwatch and Valorant on in Apex Legends, stuff like that. So this is basically how I got my um, test bench and my essentially benchmarking to be extremely consistent to where now I know exactly what a game is able to do because Process Lasso has now basically almost brute forced the entire operating system to run on cores that the game is not running on. So there's no interrupt, there's no interruptions essentially with background tasks or things like that. And the only exception is, I guess, I guess if Windows randomly just decides, but the CPU sets should fix that. And what's interesting too about this guys is that if you go to the CPU average, you'll notice that almost everything is completely quiet. So there's all of these background processes that you shouldn't really disable all of these background processes are not using any of the CPU percentage because they're all either running at idle or they are disabled in some manner or some form. And the thing that is only using the most CPU usage right now is process lasso itself and the actual system process, which you should never disable. And that's it. Everything else is basically all but the essential stuff like the Nvidia stuff, the Explorer system process lasso and the threads scale the same way too. So a majority of the threads are being taken up by the main desktop stuff that needs to kind of stay there. So I recommend you guys give this a try. Um, you can copy this down. I'll just kind of go like this really quick so you can take a look at it. But basically this is how I operate. I essentially trimmed my operating system to work exactly how I want it to. And this has made testing a lot easier for myself. So thank you guys for watching. Um, I will see if I can export this file and see how it runs for a bunch of other people. Um, but yeah, thank you guys for watching. Hope you have a good day. Cheers.